now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 706, it's O'Connor and Company here as we launch into the second half of our morning extravaganza. Thanks for tuning in here to O'Connor and Company. Uh, Coming up. As this morning unfolds, we'll be joined at 7.35 by Luke Rosiak, investigative reporter at Daily Wire. At 8.05, our friend Katie McFarlane will give us an update on the disaster of uh, foreign policy from the Biden-Harris administration as we see it unfold in the Middle East. And then at 8.35, Coach Joe Kennedy, brand new documentary, Average Joe, about his fight against the Supreme Court of the United States. Well, really against the, the left in this country for his right to say a prayer after a football game. I'm Larry O'Connor alongside Mercedes Schlapp. And Mercedes, right now we're joined by a a mutual friend and a real fighter for freedoms and liberty and against government corruption. He is Tom Fitton, president of Judicial Watch, and he's got a brand new book out in two weeks. It's available for purchase now called Rights and Freedoms in Peril. And boy, are they ever. Tom Fitton, always good to talk to you, sir. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, both of you. How are you all doing? We're good, uh, but we're uh, deeply concerned about more election interference from Jack Smith, the special counsel. Uh, He submitted this brief uh, detailing his version of events with regard to Donald Trump's participation in January 6th. And, of course, the judge has unsealed this now, just, what, 33 days before Election Day, Tom. Have you ever seen anything like this before, this this brazen interference in an election? Yeah, it's the October non-surprise. You know, Judge Chutkin, who's the Democrat judge here in Washington, D.C., and and Jack Smith, who is an employee of the Biden-Harris-Garland Justice Department, you know, colluded to to try to interfere in the election. I don't know how else to describe it. When you look at the document, they don't describe crimes. They describe First Amendment-protected discussions, discussions within the purview of the presidency, about disputing an election and what Jack Smith's key issue is, oh, Trump should have known he lost. Yeah. Well, that's a political statement. That's not a fact. Right. And by the way, Tom, I mean, if, if it, you know, set aside all your preconceptions about January 6th and the events after the uh, 2020 election, which I think by any measure, everyone can objectively agree was the most extraordinary election we've ever had in our lifetimes because of the pandemic and the rules in so many states had been changed in, in my opinion, very suspicious ways. But if you're the president of the United States and you have sworn to protect and defend the Constitution, and in your heart of hearts you believe that the presidential election and the means to determine the participants in the Electoral College vote had been determined in an illegal fashion, then isn't it your duty as president of the United States to do what you can to try to right that wrong? Yeah, I think I thought... And I still think to this day, President Trump had a legal obligation, a positive obligation under his under his oath of office to the, to pursue these claims. And just because you dispute whether there was anything any basis to do so is is just baloney. Right. Uh, and uh, this is what this document is. It's a campaign document. It is an illegal document in the sense that it's designed to advance uh, the Biden-Harris campaign or the Harris-Biden campaign, and uh, it's designed to thwart Trump. Also, it's also designed to make sure that no one disputes the 2024 election if there's a reason to dispute it, because this is what's going to happen to them. So, Tom, let me ask you this. What happens next? So they unseal this 165-page motion. Uh, What what is... What can happen in the next 30 days? What what will this mean? You know, it's not clear to me because Chutkin has kind of thrown all the rules out the window. Uh, I mean, they're litigating now whether the prosecution can proceed in light of the, uh, the immunity decision by the Supreme Court, uh, which, in my view, prohibited even the release of this. I mean, if you rule president has presidential immunity for official acts in office, does that mean you can start gathering evidence from everyone who arguably and plausibly could assert that, well, you can't ask me these questions because he has immunity about them? Yeah. You know, the whole right. the whole process is fruit of the poison tree and the evidence being presented here. To degree, it's evidence of anything. 
I just reading I, what I'm reading in that document is gossip. Well, yes. and, and and everyone yes, involved, Tom, everybody knows that Donald Trump will not have his day in court. This is 100 percent the prosecutor's case. The uh, the accused has not had their you know, the guy who's supposed to be presumed innocent. He has not had his ability to respond and he will not have his res- ability uh, his chance to respond until after Election Day. So this entire yeah, thing I mean, is, is my, my baked in the cake. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't pretend to be a lawyer, uh, but my understanding is when someone prosecutes you and files an indictment, you your your op, your right is to say, well, I object to this indictment. I'm going to move to dismiss it. That isn't what Chutkin is pushing. Right. She, he filed a new indictment, and rather than allowing Trump to dismiss it, he she authorized. Uh, the Smith operation to file what is in essence a political argument as to why immunity doesn't apply and put all this evidence on the record. It, it's a it's a wild violation of uh, Trump's civil rights, but it's par for the course yeah. for these people. I've seen them up I close. I, I testified to the grand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I testified I, to the grand jury. It was four hours of. I, I yeah. kind of say it was like being before an MSNBC um, show for four hours. Wow. I got to ask you for a chunk and like, there's no repercussion, right? Like she can do whatever she wants to do. I mean, is that the kind of the case of where we are? Like, I keep thinking that our judges have become the most, you know, most powerful uh, positions you can possibly have in our country because they dictate the terms. I mean, we've seen this with Judge Merchant up, up in New York, too. Yeah, there's no consequences for being overturned and slapped back by the Supreme Court. Uh, evidently, she doesn't care what the Supreme Court ruled and is allowing Jack Smith to still abuse his powers in an anti-constitutional way. Jack Smith doesn't care. You know, Jack Smith, he's sitting pretty no matter what happens. You know, he's got his career set out for him. Yeah. The anti-Trump prosecutor. Same goes for the DOJ officials. And if I were President Trump, and or the next honest president, assuming he wins, I would require uh, a criminal investigation of how his civil rights were abused under color of law by this gang. That's right. I agree, because, again, it needs to be repeated. If they can do this to Donald Trump, they can do this to any of us. Which brings us, by the way, to your book. Now, it's um, uh, due out on October 15th. It's called Rights and Freedoms in Peril. An investigative report on the left's attack on America. I mean, this is what you do every day over at Judicial Watch. But tell me specifically about uh, what we should expect in this book in terms of what you've been investigating, what you've laid out here about how dangerous things are right now with the lawfare that we've seen. Yeah, I mean, we we have the left kind of attacking all these core institutions to our republic. We have the First Amendment under attack through the censorship. Uh, We have really the right to select a president, the civil rights of Americans, not only Trump, but others involved in the election dispute, you know, being attacked for questioning and disputing an election, something that's never happened before where Americans are being jailed or facing threat of jail uh, for exercising the First Amendment rights and and other duties and responsibilities, as we talked about with Trump. Um, And, you know, we have kind of the whole notion of America under attack through the invasion and, and think of all the lies associated with COVID that allowed our liberties to be constrained in unprecedented ways. Uh, and, and, and the left is uh, attacking the Supreme court, all these institutions that are, are designed to protect our liberties. Of course, the core issue being the attack on the constitution generally yeah. undermining core components of the constitution. And then, you know, we have a right to have a government that is responsive to the theory that, you know, the American people have a say in how the government's composed through voting rights. And I, I'm sorry, when you embrace voter fraud, you're attacking voting rights. Yeah, well said. Not to what you're it, saying is that legitimate votes, they don't count. Right. So when your vote is stolen through fraud and election gamesmanship, Jack Smith, uh, your civil rights are, are under attack as well. Yeah, and and at the same time, uh, the right of free speech to be able to speak out against it and to uh, point out what you see as uh, an assault on our, our voting rights. 
Uh, Tom Fitton, I thought you had said it all in your last book, A Republic Under Assault, but clearly uh, they continue to double down, the left does, and that's why we need you on that wall. I appreciate you writing this book. I'm looking forward to reading it, and we'll have you back to talk about it. Again, it's called Rights and Freedoms in Peril, and it's available now. The book uh, It's available for pre-sale. The book comes out October 15th. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It is 715 WMAL Traffic and Weather Every 10 Minutes. First on the Fives with Jamie Witten and the Hadid. News is brought to you by Baird Financial. Oh, see, I hear that and I think, yes, we can watch The Apprentice again. You know, one of the really sad things about the demonization and dehumanization of Donald Trump is that they don't play the reruns of The Apprentice anymore. They used to play that in primetime on CNBC all the time, and it was great. I loved that show. I mean, that's been canceled, but I got to tell you, I mean, you have to remember, Omarosa was on that show, and Oh. She, she's a nightmare. So well, there you go. She's, she's your old coworker there in the White House, isn't she? Didn't she? Yes, that was. I've got some stories, but we'll um, we'll save that for another time. Oh no, no, no! Let's let's just let's hear them right now. No, let's. You can't do well, that. She to had us. A, so in the old executive <laughs> office building, she had one of the biggest offices. Yeah. And you would walk in there, and it was literally like she had clothes hanging up everywhere in the office it was like the most bizarre thing it was like a walk-in closet wait did she actually um, live there she did this is cheaper than I, get, getting an apartment sure. in she wanted to get i think she got married there did something weird in the white house outside yeah. on the grounds of the white house really? and she, everything was always about like how she can get on tv or get it was all right. about her it was never about the president and then she would shop online like we would be in these roosevelt room you know having these meetings very serious meetings yeah. and she would be literally i could see her like she would be shopping online. I'm like, really? <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Can I, like, much, th- it's insane. Like, this world is insane. As I, much as I, I'm I, giggling really. about that. See, now, this is why, because uh, please tell me, because I know is that you Is this why you have me around so I can give you, like, really good scoops on well, what's happening? You know, it's kinda, like. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> I know we've been you and I have been we've been very gossipy today. It's horrible. Uh, but horrible. So please tell me that that uh, President Trump has learned the lesson of some of his personnel decisions in the first term. I because- think so. Yeah, I think he's got a, a very you know solid group of people. I think right now that's who are working with him, uh. and uh, you know some of them have really been with him since 2016. So it's been a, a long All truck, right. and uh, you know I think he, yeah I think he's ready. I think he understands. I think Where so he's going to put people. I think so, too. I think, I think that he got some uh, pretty uh, sketchy advice from people at various levels, and he trusted some people that he shouldn't have trusted, like Omarosa. Um, but the upside is we get uh, wonderful stories like that about Omarosa Aren't using, they fun? using her know. giant office in the West Wing as a, uh, as a, as basically a, a giant walk-in closet. <laughs> yeah. It's like Kim Kardashian. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> she was the Kardashian of the of the first year. Oh, of the honey, Trump she House. wishes she were the Kardashian. Give me a break. You're giving her too much credit. All right. Well, uh, coming up that, after that little diversion, coming up, we will uh, report to you about uh, a, a different story related to money, 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 and that has to do with the Biden administration's Department of Federal Emergency Relief. You know, FEMA running out of money. They don't have any for the hurricane relief because they spent too much of it on illegal immigration. We'll give you those details next. It's 721. All right, and now that we're uh, past our Omarosa tangent, let's talk about the money crunch over at DHS and specifically FEMA. As the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas, said they're, quoting now, meeting the immediate needs with the money we have. We're expecting another hurricane hitting. We do not have the funds. FEMA does not have the funds to make it through the season. And one must wonder, what the heck? Have we missed some major federal emergencies? Where did the funds go? What are you talking about? And the answer is illegal immigration. Uh, yes. The Biden administration has been dipping into FEMA to relocate migrants mm-hmm. who have crossed the border and fly them all around and then give them supplies. They have treated that like it's some sort of natural, you know, God-caused emergency, an act of God, when it's actually a government emergency they've created and- themselves. And on the website, goal one is equity on on FEMA's website. I mean, it is yeah. disgusting the mismanagement of this money. I hope that Congress can, uh, you know, investigate FEMA to get to the bottom of this. Where I know they're saying that it's going to the illegals for resettlement purposes. Yeah. I want to know which NGOs are getting this money that have facilitated the constant, you know, flying illegals around in this country. Uh, trying to put them in all these different communities, overwhelming communities like we've seen in places like Springfield, Ohio. 
it, it is something that I, I just it's a mismanagement of the government. Yep. And then when you, you know we're going to have a tough hurricane season, uh, the mere fact that we've seen the, these communities in North Carolina just completely underwater, people have died. I mean, it, this is at I'm any, telling you, Mercedes, at any other time, this would be a scandal of the Biden scandal. administration, of the exactly. Kamala Harris administration. They have spent close to a billion dollars on migrant relocation. They have built welcome centers with FEMA money, emergency aid money, and now we have a legitimate emergency where American citizens have lost their homes, their lives, their livelihoods, and they're claiming they have no money. And Kamala Harris wanted, you know, a big applause yesterday for announcing this. Uh, and the federal relief and assistance that we have been providing has included um, FEMA providing $750 for folks who need immediate needs being met. $750 at, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's mismanagement. Will, it, it, is, it is It is a scandal. It is mis- yeah. And it tells you where their priorities are, and they're certainly not with the American people who need it most. It's 730 in your nation's capital. WMAL-FM, Woodbridge, Washington, a cumulus media station. Making sense of the news. News Talk 105.9. News now. Now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 736 here on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in to this busy Thursday morning. Coming up at 8.05, KT McFarland will tell us just how bad things are in the Middle East, thanks to the Biden-Harris foreign policy. And then at 8.35, looking forward to talking to Coach Joe Kennedy, New documentary about his fight to be able to say a prayer with his football players after a high school football game. Documentary is called Average Joe. I am Larry O'Connor alongside Mercedes Schlapp. And Mercedes, we're joined right now by investigative reporter at The Daily Wire, Luke Rosiak. His book, by the way, Race to the Bottom, details his investigations over the public school system in Northern Virginia and Maryland and uh, how it's sort of endemic of the race to the bottom in public schools all across the country. Uh, Luke Rosiak, thanks for joining us as always. Thanks for having me. Well, this uh, latest investigation that you've got here is uh, fascinating and also disturbing, having to do with uh, the daughter of an imam here uh, who... uh, the, the imam led a mosque where multiple uh, members of the 9-11 hijacking team there worshipped and and now uh, is an Arlington public school teacher. Uh, and it sounds like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, you know, there's been some problems in uh, Washington Liberty High School for a while now with a teacher named Shema Al-Hanudi. Uh, a lot of parents saying that she's not really teaching much English in English class. It's more talking about Palestine all the time. Uh, The group Parents Defending Education did a Freedom of Information Act request that turned up some emails that kind of showed just that. It's got a lot of of watching movies about Gaza, emails where the principal is like, uh, excuse me, Ms. Al-Hanudi, what does this have to do with the English standards that you're supposed to be teaching? And she'll be kind of like, well, I asked them to write down what the Hamas, what the Palestine movie made them think of afterwards. Um, so kind of these tendentious connections to purported English class, but really uh, this very, you know, kind of the teacher's pet peeve. Um, the emails also show her lecturing fellow staff members using an all staff email to say that uh, – one million Palestinians were being killed and that Israel was bombing hospitals. Uh, And when another teacher wrote back to say that's actually just Palestinian propaganda, she said, you know, is this uh, channel your energy into learning about subtler colonialism of Palestine or don't say anything at all. Whoa. Um, So the principal, (laughs) the principal here was actually pretty good. And he actually, you know, kind of chided her several times and said, look, I'm a, I'm a vice, I'm a principal at a, suburban high school. I don't know why you think it's our position to like solve world affairs. Uh, but she just was kind of insubordinate to him too. and refused to meet with him, um, kind of repeated insubordination and really a bad attitude from her. Um, but you know, this kind of thing just kept coming up again and again where, you know, and she's using taxpayer funded time in school to push her agenda about Palestine. 
um, kind of refusing to, you know, at one point she assigns kids to write why Israel uses the Holocaust to victimize themselves and wow. to review examples of Israel saying that it did not commit genocide and then to write down why those arguments are logical fallacies. So she's ordering children to explain why Israel is – explain as a fact that Israel is committing genocide. Well, it sounds like she um, she doesn't necessarily – it's not about education. It's about indoctrination. Um, I mean, can the school district – I mean, can the school district do anything? I mean, obviously, I'm sure they're concerned of even firing her because of the – um, you know, because of, of freedom of speech. I mean, it's kind of a, it's a challenge. Well, it's not freedom of speech. I mean, she's, she's in a, she's in a classroom being paid to teach an English curriculum. It's not like, uh, you know, lecture, uh, gather around and hear story time for whatever the, the whatever the teacher feels like saying, and that's not yeah. what school is. Yeah, um, yeah if the teacher was wearing a I'm MAGA so hat nervous. in the classroom, they'd be disciplined, yeah. I assure well, you. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is school districts are always so nervous of getting sued. So I'm sure yeah. they're like, how do we tread carefully with this, I don't know, radical teacher? Yeah, no, and you're you're right. And I mean, the thing is, she's not like, a, you know, and, and just an average Muslim a teacher that happens to be Muslim. I mean, she's connected at yes. the highest levels. Like, I'm Catholic, but I don't hang out with the Pope, you know. Um, this is a. That's a good thing not to this, hang out with the Pope. I, I kind of agree with her on that one. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but, so yeah, I mean, her father was imam at the Dar al Hijra Mosque in Falls Church, which was attended by 9/11 hijackers. Where the other imam, Anwar al Awlaki, was killed by drone strike by by Barack Obama. Where another teacher was convicted of trying to assassinate George Bush. Uh, and, you know, her yeah. father, Sheikh Mohammed al Hanoudi, he was an unindicted co-conspirator in the 1993 World Trade Center bombing plot and the 2008 Hamas fundraising trial. And an FBI memo said he raised $6 million for Hamas. Um, teacher, English teacher at Washington oh Liberty gosh. High School, Shima al Hanoudi. Yeah. Her brother went to prison for secretly working for Saddam Hussein. And then after he got out just okay. this year, okay. he called Rashida Tlaib and uh, Ilhan Omar sellouts for condemning October 7th. So this is the kind of thing. Let me guess. Is she gonna, I, is she, Luke, is she going to run for Congress next? I yeah, mean, really, seriously. This is Teacher of the Year material in Arlington. So, yeah, I mean, there are emails. You can find them on the, on the Daily Wire where, you know, there's nothing in there suggesting that she's not on Hamas's side. I mean, everything you read in these emails is she is supportive of Hamas. She won't even call it the Israel-Hamas war because she says that's not what this is. This is just genocide against Israel. Um, Imagine so being a Jewish student in this uh, teacher's classroom. This is this. Uh, I, I I mean, uh, we'll talk about a hostile learning environment. And the, this and so far, the school system is standing by her despite the complaints. Of course, yeah, I mean, they wouldn't tell me anything at all when I asked yeah. a comment. And then I saw an Arlington Now story yesterday saying she called the police after the story went up, saying that <gasps> there was a threat against her. Uh, and then CARE, the Muslim group, which is also an unindicted co-conspirator in the Hamas fundraising trial, yeah. uh, put out a press release saying they're going to fight for her. So, yeah, I mean, you're right, Mercedes. She is connected at the highest I'm level. Telling she's going to invoke sort of the radical Muslim apparatus yep. to you know, protect her. She'll be on, but it she'll kind be of on only CNN before we <laughs> You know, the fact that she's got uh, CARE, CARE's you know, top people on speed dial only – suggests when she's telling other teachers in emails that she's sending money to these different groups that she names, which turn out to be Hamas related. And she's yeah. tell, setting up a panel where the Muslim expert, who's the first one invited, suggests they get a Jewish person for balance. And she says, no, we have enough <laughs> of that perspective. Um, you know, this, this is the person who's in Arlington schools. It's not just your friendly neighborhood Muslim person and, you know, the analogy of the friendly neighborhood Jewish people person and we all get along. This is a person whose family has dedicated her in, their entire sort of careers to pushing this very particular ideology. Her yeah. parent, her father, allegedly raising money for Hamas. Now she's talking about these things on the taxpayer dime in, in public school. In front so of I our think children. The, the Again, the principal is was good about it. The principal clearly has concerns about this woman, but and she's actually lecturing the superintendent, Francisco Duran, 
lambasting him for not putting out a statement about yep. his genocide against Israel. So we'll see if they wind up doing anything wow. to it. And across president. Northern Virginia, teachers are voting to unionize so that it would be even harder to fire this teacher or discipline them in any way, even harder than it is now. Luke Rosiak, investigative reporter, Daily Wire. We've uh, grown accustomed to your great investigative skills here in uh, the education system in Northern Virginia, and uh, you've done it again. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. It is 745. Finally, the truth behind the headlines is the Vince Colony Show weekdays 3 to 6 on WMAL. As the Biden administration scrambles to clean up the mess that they've caused in the disastrous response to the disaster that is Hurricane Helene, it's pretty rich to see them bragging about how they're deploying a couple of Starlink satellite dishes there to hook up to Elon Musk's satellite network so that people can get Uh, communications and the ability to attach to the internet and because well the biden administration churlishly and unilaterally and punitively uh, killed a government award to spacex and starlink to deploy those very satellite dishes uh, several years ago Uh, were it not for the fcc declining to award this contract to starlink there would be about 19,000 Starlink kits already in the area where the hurricane hit. But they did it to punish Elon Musk because they don't like him for not towing the liberal line on things. And then it it took Donald Trump, you know, calling Elon Musk while Donald Trump was visiting the areas impacted by the hurricane to say, hey, let's, we need more Starlinks over here. I mean, I still cannot believe how disastrous the response has been in helping these hurricane victims so many lives lost i mean seriously and there and then you have kind of this week kamala you know having her quote unquote fema briefing despite the fact that she's missed several fema briefings um and then on top of that then you have joe biden now pretending like he cares yeah it, it, it's awful. Like Governor Kemp from Georgia came out and said, look, I'm disappointed. They only the federal uh, the, the only thing, you know, that Biden designated was only like 11 counties in out Georgia. of 90 that have been affected. Exactly. In Georgia. And yeah. he's so there there is a sense that not enough is being done. And then when you're talking about the fact that Secretary Mayorkas is saying, hey, we're running out of hurricane money, mm-hmm. you know, hurricane relief money, because what's and- FEMA doing? FEMA's resettling illegal immigrants in this country. That's right. And and again, back to the FCC. FCC, Musk and SpaceX, had, yes. they had already been awarded this contract yeah. for Starlink satellite systems to hook up people in rural areas. Biden administration comes in there. They get the FCC to reject this and throw it out. Elon Musk said yesterday, had the FCC not illegally revoked the SpaceX Starlink award, mm. it would probably have saved lives in North yeah. Carolina. And, and at the same time, the FCC is approving a foreign-owned group with money from George Soros to buy a ton. They're fast-tracking this plan to purchase a bunch of radio stations in this country. So yeah, here's Biden's FCC's priorities. priorities. Make sure yeah. George Soros can own talk radio stations so that they can kick Mark Levin off the air up in Philadelphia. But then call a halt to Elon Musk doing what he does best, which is get people these Starlink things. And now after the fact, Joe Biden's bragging about, well, we got 30 Starlink dishes out there to people. 30. They could have had 20,000 of them if they had let Elon Musk do his job. Elon Elon Musk said, he said, lawfare costs lives. And I mean, you're seeing that this, we we know that during this process, not only were homes lost, but also the communications infrastructure has been destroyed. I am telling you, you you tell your friends over in the Trump campaign because they don't listen to me. I'm a, well, I don't try to talk to them because I'm a, you know, but you talk to, and you tell them they need to emphasize the fact that I know they want to talk about the politics of it. and, and, And they do. They need to talk about politics and different visions and different approaches but on sheer incompetence, all the, yes. the Trump people need to say these people are incompetent. They incompetent. can't do anything right. They put politics in front of the basic functions of government, and we are suffering because of it. Yeah, that, That's you all. said it. You said it perfectly. Well, you tell said. Them to it say is it. politics over solving problems. It is absence of leadership. It is mismanagement, and this is these are the things that. Of course, the mainstream media just simply ignore. 754.